At the neonatal intensive care unit at Stony Brook University Hospital in New York, ventilators run 24 hours a day to keep the tiniest babies alive. Born nearly three months premature, Grace weighed a little more than a pound and a half when she arrived. In seven weeks, she managed to bulk up to nearly four pounds. Having mom and dad around has helped. But I think it definitely helps. I mean, I'm involved, I hold her, I feed her. I did her first feeding that she ever had by mouth, you know, in the bottle. I was able to do that, and there's a lot of risk involved with that, because she's still little and she, she can't coordinate sucking and swallowing and breathing. Like many premature infants, Grace suffers from respiratory distress syndrome, or RDS, a condition in which the lungs are too immature to function properly. If a baby is low on oxygen, it can put her at risk for brain damage and organ failure. Todd Feeney recalls the first time his daughter's condition changed for the worse. It was almost like falling off a cliff. She was going along fine, and then all of a sudden her blood oxygen levels went down into the 20s from 100, and you know, you know you're having concerns here by the amount of people that show up at the bedside in a matter of seconds. Dr. Thomas Wiswell, director of neonatal research at the hospital, has gotten accustomed to keeping little lungs going, often against the odds. We had one baby who weighed 11 and a half ounces at birth survive. And that's incredible, and that's, that's really, it's, it's not the norm, and, and most babies that would still be far too early and too small to survive. But now, as pretty much a routine kind of thing, when babies are uh, weigh one and a half uh, pounds or, or larger than that, the majority of them now survive. New ways of treating respiratory problems have made the difference. Typically, these tiny lungs would still be in the womb, filled with amniotic fluid. For humans to begin breathing air, thousands of tiny air sacs in the lungs must be working properly. These are called alveoli. Like little balloons, they cover the surface of the lungs and transfer oxygen to red blood cells. Surfactant, a protein lipid substance, keeps these air sacs open and functioning. Surfactant begins to coat the surface of the lungs before and during labor. Premature infants, and in some cases, other babies like those delivered by cesarean section, may skip this process and end up with little or no surfactant at birth. Steroids given during labor can prompt production, but usually additional treatment is required. If I know it's going to be a, a baby that's less than 29 uh, weeks gestation, which is just around uh, seven months uh, or so, I will have surfactant there in the delivery room with me. And that baby, within uh, a couple minutes of birth, uh, I will put a tube inside their mouth, inside their airway, and I'll give the surfactant right then and there. Advances in mechanical ventilation have also been critical, allowing doctors to better tailor oxygen therapy. Still, these little babies have a lot to overcome. Typically, premature babies, like these healthy twin girls, are able to go home right around their original due date. When Grace leaves, developmentally, she'll be considered a newborn. I just want to bring her into the driveway. That's all I want. I just, I would give anything just to sit on the couch with her in the house, snuggled up like this, and just relax for a while without all this, without all the machines, all the beeping, and just have her, just have her like this. That's it, just hold my hand.